Guys, drone crashes do occur. Most of the time, this is down to pilot error. Unless you're Philip Scrabber, obviously. But most of the time, it's pilot error, poor planning, and some questionable choices of your flying. So let's discuss 10 ways today of how to prevent crashes and flyaways. So the drones aren't cheap, starting at $400, £400 around the mini series, up to around about the $2,000 mark for the bigger, more expensive drones. It's not something you want to actually crash and lose. You want to take care of this. Yeah, I know you can get insurance, but it's inconvenience, time consuming. So hopefully some of these tips today will help you and actually stop all these drone crashes happening. Let's get into it. So in the UK, we have terrible weather and I know different countries around the world, weather is a problem when flying your drone. I know you're itching to get out, start flying, but flying indoors is the route some people go down and that's a really quick way of actually crashing your drone. When indoors, you're not gonna have a GPS lock. So you're in ATI mode, which means the drone's gonna be drifting side to side. You've got so many obstacles around the house. All these are potential reasons why this drone is then going to crash. You can get prop guards on it, but you're still gonna have the risk of damaging the motors or the gimbal when actually flying indoors. So if you're gonna be flying indoors, you need to be so careful. I don't fly any of the DJI drones indoors. If I'm gonna be flying indoors because I'm so bored and I want to, I'll fly a really cheap drone, something I'm not really bothered about if I then go and crash it. The main thing that gets hit first of all when you are entering a crash, especially indoors, is this gimbal. The lens is so sensitive, you get a slight crack on that, your footage is out of the window. So you can put this gimbal cover on and this gimbal guard to protect it. But indoor flying, if you're gonna do it and you want to, be so careful because that's a really easy way of crashing your drone. Flying backwards. So although this makes a fantastic shot and I do it all the time, the flying back shot does look good, but without any position sensors on the back of it, another really fast way that you're gonna crash this drone. When you're going back, you've got no idea what's behind you. By looking down at the screen, you can't tell what's behind you. And even if it's in sight, you, you can easily miss something like power lines or small twigs, something you can't see. It's gonna hit that drone or hit the propellers and then it's gonna come crashing down. So flying backwards, although it is good, it's really risky. So when you're first flying this drone, practice when there's nothing in the area, no obstacles, no trees, no branches, nothing it can hit. A, a really open space is what you want. A good tip for you when flying backwards is actually fly the shot forwards and then in the editor program, just reverse that clip. So it'll actually show you flying backwards. The clip will be in reverse, but by flying forwards low, you're getting that same shot, reverse it, and then it's taking away all that risk for you. So a quick tip there for you. Return to home altitude, crucial when flying this drone or any other drone. Where are you going to be flying? Are you flying in the countryside? So set your return to home altitude higher than the tallest tree. Are you going to be in the city? set it to the tallest building higher than that tallest building and then you can always change it when you're actually in the app and you're flying as well so if you're flying and you actually then discover another tree or another tall building change it change that return to home altitude even higher as well you don't want it to actually lose a signal and then just say it disconnects and your return to home altitude is 70 meters and then the tallest building in that area is 100 meters. It will just keep crashing into it. There's nothing you can do about it. You might lose connection. You might have a black screen and you've got no, no idea what's going on. But whilst all that is happening, the drone is returning back to you and it will just crash. So planning is crucial. Make sure that return to home altitude is set accordingly. Or what you can also do is within the settings, you can go into settings and go to advanced safety settings and change it from if you have a disconnect rather than it actually returning to you, you can set it to hover in place. So if you get a disconnect and it's near a really tall building, it will just hover in place. You could then go nearer to it and it will retain that signal. Then you can take over control and land it manually. So all about planning, where are you gonna be flying? And for beginners, make sure you're flying in a really open space, somewhere where there's not a lot of obstacles, just while you get used to it. 
So wind is a big thing and a reason why you will get a flyaway with this and then potentially a crash. If you're coming from say a Mavic or a Phantom series, you're not gonna have the same problems because they can fly in stronger winds. The Mini is a lot worse. It can't fly in really strong winds because it's so tiny. So make sure you're flying into the wind. So if this was the wind, I want to be flying into it as I first set off. And then when I'm coming back, that wind will be helping getting the drone back to me. So use a app like the UAV Fly app, which is really accurate. I've used that in loads of different countries and that will tell you your wind speed and your wind direction and then plan ahead. Do all the good shots and the cinematic shots and any further distance shots all at the start. And then when you've got a low battery, concentrate on just getting it back to you. Another surefire way of losing this drone is to ignore the automatic return to home message that comes on. I've ignored this a few times and I've nearly lost this on a couple of occasions, so don't do that. When it comes on, it's telling you that it's time to get it back because you've only got a certain amount of battery life left to be able to get from where it is to you. So if you ignore that, it's at your own risk. It probably won't make it back to you. So when it comes on, press OK and it'll auto come back to you. You can get into a really bad habit by doing that. So when the battery indicator is getting close to being on amber, bring it back to you automatically. Don't get into the habit of waiting for it to say, oh, it's time to come back now. You should know. And then as it's closer to you, it will retain back into green and then you can continue flying. But by ignoring that, it's a big, big risk. It will probably end up falling short or crashing into something or a crash landing. So don't do that. Flying areas where there's loads of twigs and branches. I went to a forest recently and although it makes a great footage, twigs and this drone just aren't compatible. They will break these propellers, they will cause the drone to crash to the floor. On bigger drones with sensors, they can't pick up them twigs. They're an absolute nightmare. They're just like little wires as well, which the drone really can't pick up on automatic sensors. So the Mini 2 doesn't have them, so it's up to you to actually see it. So if you're gonna be flying in an area, there's a lot of twigs, just like I did on the forest video, put it into cinema, go slow, and try and avoid them as much as you can, and don't get too close. Flying under bridges looks great, and I love flying under bridges, I do this a lot. So why am I going on about this? Well, it's all about planning and that illusion of what it looks like when I produce that video. So flying under a bridge has two problems. So the first is if you're if this is the bridge and you're underneath it if you was to lose connection that drone's going to rise and it's going to hit the bridge and then it's game over if you're too low it's then going to think oh is it time to land the sensors could start messing around it'll land it's game over so it's all about planning so make sure you're actually just outside of the bridge say this is the bridge you're just outside of it and then put it into cine mode and then go nice and slowly and then try and judge it properly and then continue going. Don't just be flying around like this. You see a bridge and go, oh, we'll go under there. Because unless you're some fantastic FPV pilot, you're not gonna be able to pull it off. So a quick tip for you is what I do a lot is I'm just outside of the actual bridge. I'll put it into cine mode. So I'll go nice and smoothly through the bridge, making sure it's nice and level and go through the bridge there and then we're safe. And then when I get into the editor program, I'll then speed it up. So I'll do two times speed. So in real, in real time, it's this speed. And then on final cut, when I've actually finished with it, it's this speed. So it looks a lot better. It's all about, I would rather just take five seconds doing that on final cut than actually risking this have a hit in the roof, hitting the bottom and game over. Planning. Sports mode's a lot of fun. I love flying in sports mode, but for beginners especially, because you're flying so fast, it's gonna take even longer to stop. So if you're flying in areas and you're, you've got loads of different objects around you, lots of trees, houses, fences, wherever the hell you're flying, right? You're flying, it's gonna take longer to actually come to a stop. So if you pull back on this stick or you just take your finger off it, that drone's gonna take longer to actually stop and people aren't aware of that at the time and that's when it'll go crashing into something. So sports mode and just flying fast in general around closer to things, unless you know what you're doing, it's a surefire way of crashing this drone. No position sensors on this whatsoever. So if this sees an object, nothing's gonna stop it. And this, although it is well made, it's very plasticky, doesn't take much for any problems with this at all. If you have any issues with these propellers, and you've got a slight problem with it, and this isn't spinning around fully, all it takes is one of these to be slightly jammed. It might take off in the air, and you might think it's all right, but if it's not fully working 100%, and that stops, 
game over. So flying fast as a beginner, especially, or in areas where there's loads of different objects around, is really risky. So take it easy. Sports mode is good for where there's a massive open area or over the sea or big fields. Get used to it. Have fun there. Sports mode is not for flying around cities or neighborhoods or areas where there's a lot of people about. That's not what sports mode's about. Flying in bad weather is pretty similar to point one, and especially in the UK, I'm sure you guys all know about this, but as much as you want to go out and fly your drone, just plan ahead. If it's dry, but it looks like it could go and start raining soon, scrap it, do it another day. If it starts to rain, this drone is not waterproof. None of the DJI drones are waterproof, so it needs to get back to you as fast as possible. It can handle some light rain. I've had it in bits of rain, I've had it in snow, and it's been all right. But that said, it doesn't take much for this to fry one of these motors or to have problems with the electrics. So if you are caught short, get it back to you, get the battery out, dry it all off, put it in a bowl of rice, and hopefully it still works. But it's about planning, isn't it? If you're going to be taking this off in the rain, you know, it's your own stupid fault if it doesn't actually work afterwards. If you're going to be flying this and it starts raining and you're caught short, just try and get it back to you as much as you can, quick, put it into sports mode, fly it back to you, get it dried off, and you should be fine, you'd be absolutely fine with that. And the final point, although it seems really obvious, people forget about this, and you know, I've had this a couple of times as well. So when the drone is facing you, and you press left or right, when you press left, the drone goes left, you press right, it goes right. When the drone is the opposite way, so the drone is now facing me, We'll say, but the drone is really facing me. You know, you know what I mean. So if the actual gimbal is facing me and I push left, the drone is actually going to go to my right. If I push right, it's going to go to my left. And sometimes people can actually forget that because they're having the moment or they're distracted. Someone's talking to them, and especially when you're coming into land. So say I'm coming into land here. There's a wall there. There's a wall there, and I want it to land flat. And I'm just getting it lined up here. But there's a bit of water there, so I want it to move a little bit to the left. So I want it to move this way a little bit. So someone's talking to me, oh yeah, like, you like your drone? Oh yeah, yeah, it's good that. And someone's talking, and I just press left, and it really, it goes that way, and it's now crashed. So remembering that when it's actually facing you, then controls left and right are opposite. I know it seems straightforward and simple, but believe me, you do forget. So I hope them tips there helped you to actually have safer flying with this drone. These drones are phenomenal pieces of equipment. We all love them, we all love flying them. We don't love replacing them because of errors that we have caused. So be careful, take care, have fun with your drone, and I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, like and subscribe would be excellent. We'll see you all very soon, bye bye.